in my opinion, um, the inner critic is a phenomenon that's central to any ethical system based upon guilt or negative utilitarianism in any of its various forms, uh, where the motivation for action is generally exclusively negative. Uh, the inner critic is an interesting concept, and I'll just quote Wikipedia's uh, blurb on it here. Quote, the inner critic, or critical inner voice, is a concept used in popular psychology to refer to a subpersonality, universally present in at least some form, that judges and demeans a person. A concept similar in many ways to the Freudian superego as inhibiting censor, or the negative Jungian animus, the inner critic is usually experienced as an inner voice attacking a person, saying that he or she is bad, wrong, inadequate, worthless, guilty, and so on. End quote. In a lot of Catholic humor, in this case we see the penguin here from the Blues Brothers, or in Jewish humor, um, say Woody Allen, Seinfeld, the inner voice is parodies, parodied as something that one's parents or elders deliberately insert into our minds to create enough inner havoc to control us. Um, the penguin is an absolutely tyrannical figure, the stereotypical domineering mother superior. Anyone who's gone to Catholic school knows all about that type of nun. Um, but as I say, it's completely negative. It's just a check. It's um, a restraint built into someone's personality um, I won't say that it's always put in there deliberately, but it often is. I would say in, in, in religious-type guilty uh, ethics, it's deliberately inserted, um, generally by people who assume that they're doing the right thing. Um, in order to teach you right from wrong, the saying goes, I'm going to do something that's not exactly wonderful, because it's going to cause you an awful lot of inner havoc throughout your life, but it's inner havoc that's ultimately good for you. It'll make you a good person. Well, I don't really agree with that, simply because I think that um, making somebody avoid badness is not the same thing as making someone embrace goodness. Um, I know that there are those who will disagree with that, but there you are. Um, what fascinates me, though, is that it's a means by which the ethics by denunciation that I've been speaking of can be inserted directly into someone's psyche. And again, when it's done at an, such an early age that the child simply doesn't understand what's happening and has no means of uh, questioning what exactly is being done to their mind, um, it's, uh, it's quite a powerful thing. It's... Um, it, a lot of people are familiar with it. A lot of people who suffer from anxiety or depression are quite well aware of the inner critic. It's, an also, it's also an interesting comment on how ideas similar to some sort of uh, Socratian daimon or even some sort of god can still be present in the minds of people who long ago lost any belief in god. Um, the inner critic or any kind of subpersonality uh, takes on the dimensions of something of a demigod at least uh, that has actual control over one's actions and over one's inner life in the case of the inner critic um, the inner critic is the ethics by denunciation that is inserted directly into your personality the thing about that is it can actually work both ways, but it's interesting how we tend to downplay the opposite number of the inner critic, which I would, I would call, I suppose, the inner applauder or the inner encourager. Um, in tantric practice, this is known as the inner guru, who you are supposed to find, follow, and learn to obey long before you ever get an actual guru, an actual person that you uh, submit yourself to for proper, um, detailed tantric initiation. The uh, inner guru is the, uh, the guru that is sort of an inner gyroscope that keeps you moving towards the good as opposed to away from the bad. 
It's a voice that you have to cultivate. You have to imagine a uh, very wise guru who would never betray you, who is there to guide you along your long path uh, towards um, whatever. And, and I'm sure that it, this isn't confined to Tantra. I'm sure that a lot of meditation techniques and um, personality reconstruction techniques in Eastern philosophy, or healing of personality techniques, rather, um, involve things like this. I wouldn't be surprised if Western pop psychology has something like that uh, as well. Um, but it, too, is, um, in tantric practice, is it, you are aware that it's a construct. You are aware that you have created this, that you yourself have created this ideal that you are now using as a yardstick to, um, unlike the yardstick in the penguin's hand here, you're using this as a yardstick to guide you upward towards the good as opposed to upward away from the bad. Um, you have an inner guide towards the good as opposed to an inner chastiser preventing you from submitting or succumbing to the bad. Now, I find it interesting that people who actually embrace this idea of the inner guru invariably are completely aware that what they have done is they have created something utterly artificial. They know that there's no guru up there in their thoughts encouraging them what to do, encouraging them how to overcome a particular problem or a particular block when they're meditating. Um, they're aware that all that they're doing is they're creating a construct that assists them in working out um, the details of their spiritual growth, I suppose you could call it, if you want to use that kind of term, or that, that kind of terminology. Um, but people who have the inner critic um, are often completely unaware that it's there. Um, they may be tortured, uh, Orestes-like, with the furies of the inner critic never letting up for a second, but they might not even be aware that that phenomenon is going on. They may simply be subjected to these thoughts that, as it were, seem to just bubble up spontaneously from within, completely unaware of the fact that there is a very good chance that that inner critic was inserted into their character by someone else who probably, as I say, thought they were doing the right thing. They were doing them a favor. Um, <clears throat> it's interesting that knowing that the inner critic is artificial, because you, you can pretty easily, I think, intellectualize the idea that these thoughts that you have of uh, inner criticism are pretty useless and going nowhere. You can you can intellectualize the idea that that's, you know, all that is taking place is you have this inner construct that has a power over you. But you can't really just weaken it simply by knowing that it's there. It takes work. It takes as much work to deal with the inner critic as it does to conjure up a viable inner guru, I would assume. Um, and it might be even harder to, get, to deal with an inner critic simply because it may have been in there all of your life, not just your adult life, but all of your conscious thinking life. It's a form of denunciation that is deliberately insidious, and it's deliberately meant to motivate us negatively. Um, it's uh, something that people who are adept at inflicting guilt or anxiety or at least confusion on other people um, are doing for that very purpose. It's a form of control or at least a form of power. Um, if you can insert inner chaos into someone's mind or if you can insert the idea that there is this sort of demigod inside of them that is watching everything that they do and will criticize them for it and that and criticize them with a voice of authority you can control that person i'm reminded of a french canadian priest who said something along the lines of um, give me a child until he's 7 and he's mine for the rest of his life <laughs>